We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Very warm welcome to our Eucharist this morning on the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Please be seated for our notices. Immediately following this morning's service, we will have our annual Procure Church meeting delayed from April. So it'll be great to actually hear what we got up to in 2019 and to elect uh, new members to our PCC and our new church wardens. I hope many of you will be able to stay on for that meeting. Apologies, but it is a little bit chillier than it should be in here this morning. We set the timer times, but someone forgot to press the actual auto button, so it didn't go on. But it will warm up as mass progresses um, and as you sing under your masks, mumbling more like, um, you will warm up a little bit. As Ruth isn't here this morning, can I take this opportunity to remind you that her last Sunday among us will be Sunday the 1st of November. And if you would like to contribute towards a leaving gift towards her, please see either Yop or Lorraine who are organising um, our leaving gift to her. Thank you very much to all of you who took who have taken part in our harvest appeals. Um, I haven't yet got the totals for um, the Make a Buzz in Nepal project yet, um, but I know that 217 kilos of produce was taken down to dens alongside all a, a lot of other stuff that they particularly needed for the on their high needs list. So thank you very much for your generosity towards the work of dens. I think that's it for notices. Now, I published the bands of marriage between Thomas Edward Davis and Laura Ann Connor, both of this parish. This is for the second time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons may not be joined together in holy match me, ye are to declare it. Let's pray for Thomas and Laura Ann. Lord of love, we pray for Thomas and Laura Ann. Be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding day, and give them your love in their hearts, both now and throughout their married life together. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remain seated for our opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
the Lord welcomes us into his presence, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We stand to give praise to God. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit to hear God's word. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, O dear, and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, 
whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. We stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. May I speak and may you hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I dare say you have all been invited to a wedding, and you will know how important etiquette and preparation are. Invitations must be sent out well in advance with a clear indication of timings. Menu choices and dietary requirements must be returned. Suitable gifts and clothing have to be purchased. The list goes on and on and the number of spreadsheets each couple has increases annually. But it wasn't like this at the time of Jesus. Back then, invitations to important weddings were more like announcements that a marriage would take place at some point in the future. Neither the date nor the time were clearly specified for very practical reasons. For only once the bridal party had gathered all the food, wine, musicians, and everything else that was needed, only then would the wedding celebrations go ahead. Only once everything was ready would the household's servants go out to round up the guests. And if you had been put on the spot by the sudden call to attend the party, you didn't have to worry. Even suitable wedding garments would have been provided. So, if you had been invited, all you had to do was turn up. A bit hap hap haphazard, you might think, but in the days before clocks, professional wedding organisers and legal registration, this system worked pretty well, even when the wedding was not an ordinary one. This 
is the marriage celebration organised by the king. A party that would have lasted at least a week. And the closest thing we can compare it to nowadays would be being invited to Buckingham Palace for a week-long lively programme of state dinners with food, entertainment, clothes and accommodation all provided. Just imagine that and the expense. And it is into this cultural context that Jesus places today's parable. A story in which the King is God the Father. His Son is Jesus himself, and the servants are the prophets of old, some of whom had been maltreated and even killed. The original guests, the ones who had been invited, backed away from God's invitation to be his holy nation, are are an illustration of Israel's religious elite. To them, Jesus contrasts the new guests, gathered from the most unlikely of places, the crossroads. These are the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, us, the ones to whom God willingly extends his call to become his holy people. The wedding garments, which are so crucial in order to be admitted to the feast, are a representation of the habits of faith and love we must practice. And finally, the celebration itself is an image both of the eternal life which, with which we hope to enjoy and of holiness which we are called to live and represent. So, in reading this parable, what does the call to holiness look like? First, we can say that God's call is open to everyone. Even if so many people turn his offer down, God will keep on inviting. Secondly, we can say that God's call is a free gift. There is no charge, no fee or hoops that we have to jump through in order to be called to become saints. We do not need to be able to prove ourselves worthy of it because God's invitation is and always will be there. And lastly, we can say that the call to holiness is essentially a call to joy, an invitation and a cause for celebration. For too long, saints or holy people and faithful Christians have been seen as killjoys, as boring. But the parable of the wedding feast essentially says, God calls you to joy now and to celebration in the life to come. The only thing we have to do is to clothe ourselves in the wedding garments of faith and good deeds which God provides us for us. Now, as unoriginal as, as it may sound to us now, the meaning of this parable was groundbreaking for Jesus' original listeners. Everyone is invited to the wedding feast. Not just one nation or type of people, Each one of us, as the parable says, bad and good alike, is called to become a saint. Ahead of our APCM in a moment, I am thankful for the people who have heard this invitation and responded and have turned up. People who have not... People who have not yet heard the message and people who have heard it are getting to know it. I'm thankful for the change of demographic we have seen in the makeup of our congregations because of the welcome we give them when they join us. I'm thankful that our doors are open every day bar lockdown and the way anyone can walk in and spend time with God in the serenity of this place. I'm thankful for so much for there is a lot to be thankful for. 
but there is also a lot more to be done. We are the servants charged with ferrying that invitation to come and celebrate. I wonder how often we actually share this message. For if we each invited just one other person to join us in worship, and they accepted that invitation, our churches would be full every week. Perhaps we would do well to rediscover this meaning, our role as servants, and our joy in the invitation entrusted to us. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in declaring our faith in the living God. Will you please stand and use the words in your hymn sheet. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We sit or kneel to pray. Loving Father, we pray for your church throughout the world and we rejoice that you have invited all and that we are here. Help us to take that invitation with joy and with cheerfulness and with gentleness and patience to all who do not yet know the invitation. But we weep for the survivors of abuse and cover-ups and we pray for their healing in body, mind and spirit. Cleanse and fill your church with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that all may find a safe welcome and know your love and power and peace. We ask your blessing on our annual meeting after this service and on our brothers and sisters not able to be with us here today. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all in authority over the nations. Strengthen the peacemakers and open the hearts of those who would make war to hear the cries of their peoples for peace. We pray for all who have difficult decisions to make, for wisdom, cooperation and humility. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray your blessing on our homes, our places of work, our schools and all other communities to which we belong. Please, Lord, may a vaccine soon be ready against this deadly pandemic. And in the meantime, keep us vigilant in our respect and care for others as we seek to follow the safety guidance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, and for all who care for them in their weariness and anxiety. In a moment of quiet, we pray for those on our newsletter and on our own hearts this morning. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and a sure knowledge of your loving, healing presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we remember before you all who have died and those who grieve for their loved ones, especially this week for Simon Woodmore, priest, Lillian Baldock and Peter Plested. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. 
merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us wave to one another a sign of Christ's peace. We sit for our offertory hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of a blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. 
so he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, His perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, Christ is the King. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Our meeting will begin in about three minutes. My time has cleared away here. Take your best from top and you're all ready. If you wish to go, please go, but I won't be able to say goodbye to you at the door. But I hope many will stay. See you in a moment.